Okay, welcome back. In today's episode, I got something a bit different. I was contacted by one of my subscribers, Aaron Pierce. He mentioned he had a couple of boards on hand and he asked if I wanted them. So yeah, I threw him some money for the boards and to cover the shipping. And he also mentioned in the email that he had some other things he wanted to send over. So I'll be taking a look at some stuff in this video and the rest I'll take a look at in the future. So here's everything unboxed. He sent over an N64, a Super Famicom. Now he mentioned that that's actually a Super Nintendo board in a Super Famicom shell. He sent a loose Super Nintendo board and then he sent a Super Nintendo that's been yellowed. He mentioned he did some work on these consoles and he just ultimately couldn't get them to work. So here's a Kirby game. He also asked me if I can fix that and send it back to him. So yeah, I'm going to be taking a look at the Kirby game in this video and if we and I'll also be taking a look at the N64. He also sent a couple of loose things that he thought that I might need to repair these consoles. So yeah, I'll be, I'll be setting those aside. I might use them in the future or might not even use them at all, but I still I'm still appreciative. Thanks. So my first priority is getting this cartridge back to Aaron. So here's my my N64 and I'm just going to test to make sure everything is working. And yeah, this console's working. So now I'm going to test his game, see what I get from it. So when I flick the power switch, I don't even get a black screen. I just, it just remains in no signal. So let me open it up, see if I can repair it. He mentioned that it, he thought it might be a broken trace. So if it's a broken trace, I can repair that or I could just swap the board. I think if I'm going to make it look nice, I'm going to just do a board swap and I think he'll be more appreciative of that. Right here on the ground shield, I do see some rust. So moisture did get into this board and hopefully it didn't destroy the ROM. That's what I'm more concerned about, a bad ROM. So upon closer inspection, I do see a black uh, mark on that trace there. I don't know if he used uh, conductive paint. Some conductive paint is carbon based and um, that I suspect maybe use that but it could be a burn mark. I also see that uh, two pins on the ROM are bridged so I gotta repair that. I also noticed that one of the pins on the uh, connector is corroded or black so yeah this whole board is gonna swap. So here's the board number and I gotta find a board that's an equivalent to use it as a do suitable donor. So I have this baseball game and I'm hoping that it has the same board. So just if, if so, I could just swap the ROM and the, uh, the CIC if I need to and it should work. But now I notice that it's a bit different. It's an NUS 01A02 and the other one is an 03. So yeah, there's a couple components that are missing and I think the Kirby uses a save chip and the baseball game doesn't have it. So here's a forum that actually shows all the N64 board revisions. So this is what I'm going to use to see if I can figure out some more research on this Kirby game. To my surprise, it did actually come in an O2 variant. So the board actually did come in both variants. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swap all the components and it should still be good as factory. It shouldn't have any uh, noticeable differences. So after desoldering the ROM, I do have to prepare this board for more components. So these through holes have been soldered sealed. So I gotta open them up and I actually have to remove the CIC because the CIC is a bit different and they do and on N64 boards, on N64 games, the board could be the same but the CIC could be incompatible. So I'm gonna make sure that I swap all the components. Just the only thing different is gonna be the board. So here's the bad board. I'm going to remove all the components. In short summary, it's going to be the ROM, one capacitor, the save chip, and the CIC lockout chip. So 
So I guess I'll take this time right now while I'm working to explain. I know some of you have noticed that I'm in, I'm using a different setup. I'm in a different room. So yeah, I did move my setup to one of the rooms. It's easier for me because now I don't actually have to uh, put everything away when I stop working. So I can actually just leave a project to be continued, walk away, and then come back later at a later time and finish up. So it's a bit crammed, and but it, it should be better for me. And the only problem I'm having currently is the lighting situation. I noticed that it's a little bit dark, especially at night when I'm trying to work. So yeah, I have to figure out a solution for some better natural light. So here's one thing to mention on the CIC, um, it's a 6103A, some CICs are different so that's why there, there could be incompatibility issues even if the board is the same and you're, you're thinking about just swapping the ROM, just double check the CIC make sure they're the same. So remember we had two bridged pins. Now when I tried to desolder this, I had to set my temperature on my iron a bit high. So you never want to set your temperature to an extreme high. It'll destroy, uh, you can destroy your ROM chip. So what I'm thinking was that this was lead free solder, which you don't want to use lead free on electronic components. That's more for plumbing applications. So I don't know who the previous uh, technician was that tried to work on this board they really shouldn't be using lead free solder. So what I did was I added a bit of my solder to that spot, I mixed it in, and then I'm gonna take a piece of desoldering braid and try to just suck it all up, and hopefully that'll clear the two pins. A 
eventually it did come loose. So let me add this ROM into circuit now. So it really came out nice. There's a bit of solder splash here, so let me just scratch that off. Yeah, it looks pretty pretty close to factory. So before I close this up, I wanna clean this off. I wanna clean the flux off the board and just make it look presentable. So even though these pins are okay, I'm still gonna use some Brasso to just really polish them up. I wanna make sure that this game fires up on the first try. So I know it's frowned upon but a little pass a little pass with brasso isn't going to hurt anything so the old cartridge back is torn and the uh, ground shield is rusty so i'm just going to use the front face of the cartridge along with the other the back from the baseball game and the shield from the baseball game just because it's in better condition and i'll even use the screws from that too now aaron might actually want the original back to it and you might also want the original screws and ground shield so I'm gonna be sending that to him as well just in case he feels as though he wants it the way he wants it so I'm gonna send everything that came in this lot as uh, everything that came on this cartridge I'm gonna send it back to him and he can keep it for himself and figure it out himself and I was thinking about cleaning this red mark off the cartridge I didn't do that because that might be something that he put on there or some he didn't instruct me to do that so I feel as though I don't I shouldn't do that so I'm gonna mount all the the old board and all the miscellaneous parts together and I'm gonna seal up the cartridge and just to lock the ROM for the baseball game in place I'm gonna just bend over the chip legs just so it doesn't rattle or just doesn't come loose from the board and then if he wants to use these pieces for something else or if he wants to keep it along with the Kirby game for uh, whatever he can have it for himself So now for the moment of truth, let's test this out. So yeah, it does seem to be working, but more surprisingly, I overlooked one thing. The save is still there. There's still save on this chip. Now, so, since it doesn't use a battery, it's either an FRAM chip or flash memory chip, and that's great. So now if the, this progress was his, he still has his old progress on this cart. So like I said, I got to send this back. I'm also going to send this. This is the rest of the pieces to the game. And here's the working game. And I, it should be there in a couple of days. So enjoy the game. If you have any questions, just email me. And yeah, so let's take a look at the N64 now. Okay, now for the N64. Now I hooked it up. Let's see if I can get anything out of it. It didn't come with an expansion pack or a jumper pack. So I'll just throw in my own. It seems all I get is no signal, so it's not even a black screen. Now in the past, I've gotten uh, two, I think, two or three N64s with no signal, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with them. So hopefully in this video, it's something simple. I'm going to open it up, take a look at what's going on. Now Aaron did mention at times the N64 would work and it would, when it did fire on it would work without problems. 
So I, I don't maybe I don't know. This is something that's odd to me. I actually don't want to remove all these screws. The only screws you have to remove are the long skinny ones that are next to the RAM expansion port and the two these two silver screws right next to the black screws. I did remove the black screws as well. I didn't I didn't think I don't think you actually have to remove those. Now I'll just pop off the cartridge connector. Now he mentioned that he did clean this cartridge connector really well and I I can tell it does look okay. And under the cartridge connector, everything is fine. So here I want to make sure that I'm getting 5 volts at the AV connector. If I have 5 volts at the AV connector, that could that's a good sign. And I actually don't. I have about a third of a volt. So I think we have a fault here. Now here on the voltage regulator, I should be getting 10 to 12 volts on the input pin. And on the output pin, it should be 5. Now on the output, I'm getting nothing. And on the input, I'm only getting a volt and a half. So I'm thinking there's a short on the board. So here on the power switch pin, I'm getting 10 volts with the power off. And when I flip the power switch on, uh, I only get 1.1 volt. So I'm thinking there's a short, definitely a short on the board. So with my multimeter in continuity, I'm going to check to see if there's a short on the board. So as you can see, the, the ground and the input pin on the voltage regulator are short together. So there's definitely a short. Now, oddly enough, if I switch the leads, if I put the, the negative, the, the, the black probe on the ground and the red probe on the voltage regulator, I don't have a short. So that's really where I'm confused. Now, I'm not an electronics engineering major or anything, but I, I just don't understand that. And as you can hear, some of these caps are also short to ground. So I'm going to swap some of these caps and see what I get. And see with that power off, the short is gone. So it's only when I engage the switch, when I add current to the circuit, is when I get a short. Now I have a hunch that this 33 microfarad cap and the 68 cap, they come between the power and the voltage regulator. That means they're after the power, but before the voltage regulator. And I think one of these may have failed. So let me swap these two first and if I can get and see what I get. Okay, in the past I did have a 33 cap fail on a previous console that caused the no sound. So I'm thinking these 33s are the ones that are at fault. But in oddly enough, I still have a short on the board and it seems it's the 68 microfarad cap. Now I hate the N64. I just don't like the architecture. There's not enough 
information when something goes bad i can't tell by anything so i, I just i never actively seek n64s anymore because if they fail I, I hate i hate working on them Now let me test. Now the BPU here is just a cap further along in the circuit discharging. There is actually the short is gone. So I'm headed in the right direction. So here's the 68 microfarad cap. Now let me test for continuity, see what I get here. And as you can see it's a short cap. So the 68 did fail. Now here's the 33 microfarad cap. Let's see if this one's short too. It seems like this cap is okay. I did test for capacitance and it was in in the correct value. So I just I'll just replace it anyway. So I got these electrolytic capacitors that I'm going to add to this circuit. So these two caps do clear the shield, so this is how I, it came out. Now I didn't get any image on the screen even though I did get 2.5 volts on the voltage regulator. So I started replacing more caps, here you see I'm moving to uh, swap into 220 and then eventually I did swap some others. I didn't record any of that, obviously you see one cap being swapped, you understand how I'm doing it. So just to save some time. Now, here's where the dilemma is. I do get 2.5, but I still got 0 on the output of the voltage regulator. So, I just, I'm confused. I tried, so now I, as you can see, I got the 10 microfarad caps out of circuit, and I'm going to replace those as well. And I'm just running out of ideas. I just don't like the N64. So, with the 10 microfarad caps out of circuit, I did get 11, but I don't think it's because I pulled them out of circuit. And I do get 5 on the output. So what I'm thinking is it's the power port in the back that's flimsy. The power port is not making a great connection. Because if I can wedge up the power port in a certain way, I do eventually get an image. And I'll show you that right now. So with the screwdriver wedging the console up in an angle a bit, I do get an image and it works just fine. So I think the two faults, the two main faults on this board were, one was the 68 microfarad cap causing intermittent, and the other one was a like a loose power plug in the back. It's not making a great connection. So I do clean this power port out with uh, electronic spray and some 99% alcohol, but the pin to the top right of your side of the of the screen, I wedge it up and right a bit. So if you're looking at this, the pin furthest to the top right. That's the one I wedge up a bit just so when I connect the power brick to it, it gives it a little resistance and it makes a better contact. So that ultimately g improved the results greatly. 
Now here are all the caps that came off this board. Now I don't think I had to replace them all. I could have just replaced the 168 microfarad cap, maybe even the 33. But yeah, this is the way it goes. Sometimes you go down the rabbit hole and you tr try to figure out what's wrong and it was just something you overlooked. So to give the console a bit of a shine, I'm going to use some Goo Gone. Now Goo Gone does have a terrible smell to it. Some people don't like it. I don't mind it too much. And it does leave a greasy residue if you don't use, if you don't follow up with a dry piece of cloth or the dry section of the paper towel. And it does come off. It's not stubborn in any way. Don't think that it's just stubborn grease. It does come off. And it does look a lot better. So this console, obviously the reset button's a little chewed up. And it's not in the greatest shape. It doesn't look too, too great. But it is working, so that's a plus. So that's all for this video. As you can see, the console is, this is how it turned out, and it does work. So stay tuned for the Super Nintendo and the Super Famicom boards that I got to take a look at. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And once again, thank you for watching.